And as you see me right now, I've left all of that behind and I'm putting everything that I've got into racing rally for the 2024 season and to build all sorts of cool cars here on the Rad Potential YouTube channel and potentially teach you guys something in every video. It's always been a dream of mine to race off-road rally. From when I was in high school racing dirt bikes, seeing Travis Pastrana start on the Subaru rally team, all the crazy adventures that he's had racing rally following along with the Nitro Circus and kind of as social media grew, also discovering Ken Block and his Jim Connor videos and his go fast, risk everything attitude. From a very young age, I was inspired and learned about rotary engines through the Fast and the Furious movies, Fast and Furious 1, when the camera goes through the engine, you can see the rotors spinning and I always wondered how that worked. And then my attraction to rally ultimately drew me to all these old Rod Millen videos of him ripping around in a first generation RX-7. Just looked like he was having the time of his life. Rear wheel drive car, gravel road, effectively a gravel buzz saw. Just sounded like a two stroke dirt bike ripping up the forest roads. And ultimately when I was younger, I figured as Travis always said, with age you get a cage. I would inevitably transition from dirt bikes into being more of a hobby rally car or road race enthusiast. And, and that basically happened. I got into RX-7s, started playing around with autocross, going to track days. In 2017, I bought a very used 1980 Mazda RX-7 X rally car that had been raced on a regional level. So I picked up this car out of hibernation, turned it into a safe rally car with my grandfather in roll cage and my old SCCA Pro Rally logbook and went out and I raced Southern Ohio Forest Rally and show me a rally. And I was so stoked to be able to do that with none other than my dad as my co-driver. Southern Ohio Forest Rally was a huge success. The car that I put together as a novice rotary enthusiast, 20 years old, finished the entirety of the rally with no major hiccups. And I was super stoked just with that result. We finished. Now, show me a rally later that year, had an ignition coil issue, the car wasn't running great, ended up sliding off the road in a corner and kind of got stuck in the ditch, had to get drug out by the sweep, and we just called it at that point. It wasn't worth risking the rest of the car. And inevitably, at that moment, I didn't realize that it was gonna be until now that I would get to race rally again. Graduated college, worked as a civil engineer in Nashville, Tennessee. And as you see me right now, I've left all of that behind and I'm putting everything that I've got into racing rally for the 2024 season and to build all sorts of cool cars here on the Rad Potential YouTube channel and potentially teach you guys something in every video. This is my 1977 Mitsubishi Lancer, AKA a Dodge Colt, or I guess the other way around, because technically this is the United States car. So this is a Dodge Colt, as it says so on the title but the VIN plate on the side does say Mitsubishi. So this car was a rally car in the 90s. Same with the car behind me. The car behind me was actually a rally car since brand new. We're in the company of two very tried and true rally car setups here. The one behind me has probably raced, I don't know, two or three log books worth of rallies. And the one right here is still on its original log book. So we've got the test car that somebody else put all the time into testing and figuring out how to make a Dodge Colt work and the one that got raced a few times on a regional level. So you might ask, how does one find 1977 Dodge Colt rally cars for sale anywhere in the world? One of my dream rally cars has always been a Mark II Ford Escort. Now, those cars in the UK, overseas, Ireland are very popular, reasonably easy to get your hands on parts for them. But in the States, it can be a little bit daunting trying to afford one of those cars, keep one of them running for the entire rally season. Now my buddy Patrick, back whenever I bought my first RX-7, he had the Dodge Colt that is sitting behind me. It was white and red, it's got a 2.6 liter twin McCoonies and it was the coolest first full blown race car that I had really ever been around. That car had a fuel cell, it had all sorts of switches and lights and race seats and harnesses and I'd never really been around a car like that. So getting to experience driving that car a little bit eight or nine years ago and then Patrick's brother Ryan ultimately they found this one, another Colt rally car from a guy named George over in Illinois. I was fortunate, George had some RX-7s, so I also bought some RX-7s from George. We made two huge hauls worth of cars out of George's farm, and it was super awesome to meet George. There's actually a film called Rally George where this car and Patrick playing George in the film. There's some good driving in that film. It's really neat to see. And about two years ago, I negotiated a deal with Patrick and his brother to be able to buy both of these cars and all of their Dodge Colt spares 
in order to pursue racing rally again. So these cars weren't exactly something that I just stumbled across on Facebook Marketplace. I had been planting the seed with Patrick over time. They're like, hey, if you ever want to sell those cars, let me know. So now I've got two 1977 Dodge Colts that are ultimately, one of them is going to be re booked as a new rally car, which is this one. And then we have the one behind me, which is the Rad Ranch missile rally car that we get to go practice in. And I get to train Calvin, who's gonna be my co-driver for these events. We can do some practicing in a road legal, semi-similar setup to what the rally car is gonna be car. And I'm excited to pursue my dream of racing one full season of the American Rally Association National Championship. So that is 2024's goal. We're gonna take this Dodge Colt right here, the backup Colt over there, another backup Colt, and we're gonna go race all eight events all across the country, American Rally Association in limited two wheel drive. This car, in the last six months, the Patreon members saw whenever I bought it, brought the car home. We actually ripped this car at the Rad Ranch in Tennessee before I sold that and moved up here. I took the car apart, kind of mid me moving all of my cars up from Tennessee to the new Rad Ranch. During that time, inspecting the roll cage, I probably could have gotten away with adding bars to this existing roll cage, but some of the welds weren't exactly the best. The main hoop was a little bit small compared to what's required nowadays. So I cut the old roll cage out and took this car up to Broken Motorsports in New Jersey to my friend William up there, and he knocked out a new FIA spec roll cage for this. So William at Broken Motorsports, he used to race a Nissan 240SX back in the years before I was really racing RX-7s, but he was kind of, the 240 was getting a little tired by the time I started racing RX-7s and really was getting into actually racing rally versus just following the WRC. So I'd never really met him back then. In my mind, the person that I want to build my roll cage for a rally car should be somebody who is around rally cars. So Broken Motorsports and Bleeding Tarmac, his two companies, they specialize in everything for rally cars, roll cage kits for Subarus. This one was more of a custom cage for this car, but him knowing all the rules, regulations, being through tech inspection rally all the time, it was very, in my head, wise to take my car to him to get the safety stuff done, such that when I do go to tech inspection, I don't have troubles trying to get my car to pass tech. So let's take a journey up to Broken Motorsports. Picked the car up a couple days ago. I left at 4 a.m., drove all the way through the day, picked the car up at six o'clock, drove all the way back through the night, and you're seeing the car effectively exactly how it came back from Broken Motorsports, and it is ready to start the process of putting all these boxes of parts that I've been ordering and buying and are sitting at my parents' house on this car so that hopefully in a month we're ready for snowdrift rally where we can shake the car down and ideally we just finish the event. Not trying to set any records, not trying to get stuck in a snowbank, although we might. We just want to go up there, have a good time, race snowdrift, check that box off, completed the event. So let's get up to New Jersey, meet William, check out the car whenever I get to see it first. Then we'll come back here and I'll give you the rundown on both of these cars. Check this out. So up here at Broken Motorsports in New Jersey, which is a long way from Indiana, because the Colt got a new cage. So if you think we can roll down the hill, and be alive, this is the cage for you. Because that's what we need. Got rid of the old, rusty, crappy welds. Probably not even DOM. It was probably just regular black iron pipe roll cage. We got the new one. So, up here, this is William and Alex. William runs the shop. Alex just been hanging out. Just met him 13 seconds ago. Yeah. You got all sorts of cool cars here too. A little Evo 10. Some Subaru stuff, another Z for focus. So William, what do you do? You've been racing rally for a while. I know we really met the first time yeah, whenever I, I called you for the Colt, but uh, yeah, I followed I, you for a while. Yeah, I've, I've been in it for 25 years, just about. Um, been rallying, uh, well, I started out volunteering first and started racing myself in 09 and have tested my own product very well. Um, <laughs> Roll cages has been sort of, uh, 
I don't know, sort of like my passion um, for, for roll cage design and safety for a, a many number of years, because way back when, when I was first starting to try to get in a rally in like 04, 05, to try to build my first rally car, I bought a custom cage kit, not custom cages kit, but I bought a, ca a cage kit from the UK that was supposed to be for a GC Subaru like that thing. And uh, it fit like, and I hated it. And, <laughs> and from that point on, because I had spent so much money trying to get that cage and get it in my car and everything, um, I had lost a lot of money as like a college kid. Yep. And uh, yeah, I had to put off my dream of being a race car driver for another five years. And, yep. You know, so, uh, but from that moment on, I just started studying cages and figuring out how they go in and doing all the stuff. So now we've got a number of different cages here that, are, you know, some of them are my cage, roll cage kits. That's, that, that yes, is a roll, one of my roll cage kits. And then that one we built by hand. Um, this one for you, we built by hand. Um, this one was actually built by another shop. Um, but, um, you know, we're maintaining this car now. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, this is kind of like what we do. We build a lot of, a lot of race cars, but mostly rally cars and, you know, try to keep everybody as safe as possible. For sure. So. Yeah. The one thing I was super stoked about is like, I had a cage builder lined up in Nashville, just a regular old drag car, drift car, fabricator guy and kind of approaching him about building a cage for rally with it being, I forget the actual article, but like an FIA certified right. cage versus just a local drift comp cage or even just like an 850 or a sportsman's cage for a yeah. drag car. It's a totally different thing different. when it comes to door bars, roof, just it's a whole different thing. So yeah. I had been following William because he was like back in the day when I was racing my RX-7, he had this 240 you know, the other JDM rear wheel drive car guys yeah. and all the cool videos of like, you know, your car has been on its lid a couple of times. Oh, I just yeah. always remember seeing those videos yeah. and like, this guy's cool. So I'm going to follow him and then eventually <laughs> come to needing a roll cage. And you know, yeah. he knows it's when you're going to build a car for a certain series, you know, in my mind, I would want to target the people that are already building the cages or doing the safety equipment or building cars for that series to help you with your car because they're going to know what to do versus if i'd have taken it to this drag car guy yep. showed up to the first rally and they'd have been like well this bar is in the wrong spot this is in the wrong spot yep. and you know all of that plus yeah. you know the guys with the experience will tell you help you learn without having to go to the school of hard knocks a whole bunch of times oh so, yeah yeah, Which that, honestly, that's like one of the reasons why I, I started the business was because I hate seeing people get burned all the time. Yeah. You know, so. so yeah. And I, I like I like helping people realize their racing <laughs> dreams, too, and, you know, go do stuff, you know, if they want to go, you know, crash their car and roll it three times like my S13 and keep yep. going. Well, I can do that for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I mean, it's a it's a fun sport. It's a good it's a good thing to be in, you know, so. Yep. Yeah, and I'm excited for one, the year racing this thing and hopefully not having to reskin my roof a bunch of times over the more than exceptionally strong roll cage and uh, it's going to be exciting. So Broken Motorsports is the fabrication shop, yep. cage kits and stuff like that. And I think you all also have Bleeding Tarmac, which is kind of like a yeah. parts sales, online, safety stuff, online store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So I'll put the links down in the description. Go check them out. We're going to push this thing outside and get it on the trailer and got 13 hours back to jasper indiana it's gonna be great <laughs> that's it just 13 hours. yeah it's gonna be just fine we're that's just gonna that, rip it all the way through the night that's like the, the that's like the minimum distance to go to a rally most of the time pretty much like 10 10 hours yeah like, you know 13 is no big deal yeah you know, it's like whatever just get up at four in the morning drive here yeah. get the car and then we'll just drive back we'll just oh. be just fine yep <laughs> all right let's get her on the trailer Rally cars arrived back at the shop. It is currently 7 in the morning. The following morning from whenever I picked the car up from William up in New Jersey. Just kind of got on a roll listening to some podcasts and decided I just drove all the way through the night solo. So back here, I'm going to wipe the roll cage down. 
and then we can recap here in a second after I sleep. So we're gonna start with Penelope. This car, Dodge Colt, was bought brand new by a guy named Larry Schmidt in 1977. It was yellow and it was turned straight into a SCCA competitive rally car. Right off the factory floor, gutted race car. And it has been used and abused for the last 30 something years as a regional rally car and largely pretty much unchanged since its last competition really with Larry Schmidt back in the day. So this car has some of the trickest Mitsubishi factory bits on it from the 70s and 80s. It has fiberglass bumpers. It's got big Rally 2000 hella lights on it. It's got a fiberglass hood that literally weighs about nothing. It's just a sheet of fiberglass. Under the hood is a 2.6 liter engine, twin Solex Mikuni carburetors. It's got this super trick remote oil filter, oil cooler setup over here. If you can name what car these little lights are off of, these service lights, drop that in the comments below because these are super sweet. They don't work. I can find new ones. I think it's probably just a bad ground. I bet if I wiggled stuff around, I could get those lights to come on. But the car is fully reinforced, fully braced up. It's probably one of the simplest rally cars you could really ever set up. Four-cylinder, five-speed, doesn't really overheat, works great. It's got a Datsun 510 rear axle in it. Limited slip works fantastic. Inside the car, this is close to the style of roll cage that the other Dodge Colt over there had. So you can see small bars, no roof X. It does have a main hoop X. It does have temple bars right there. The other car didn't have those. Harness bars in the main hoop, you can see the intercom up there, but you can see that that main hoop, it's the same diameter as all of the rest of the tubes in the whole car. So because this was a lighter car back in the day, you didn't have to make the roll cages as strong. As far as dash and wiring, most of the factory dash remains. Big switch box for the lights, custom rally computer, Sparco Evo seats, and the original handbrake was modified for a hydraulic handbrake. So. You just put this pin in right here and it locks the button down and you can rip that and it's plumbed in line with the rear. First aid kit back there behind the seat. And one of the coolest parts of the car is actually everything that's back here. So hood pins, fiberglass trunk. And this is an RX-7 spare tire that I stuck back here because I was filming some stuff and needed something to hold my camera. This is an 18 gallon fuel safe fuel cell. Looks like it's been in there for a long time. Nice spare tire mount, twin fuel pumps with extra filters. There's a switch up there on the dash that switches to the backup pump or the other pump. Safety triangles, battery box. This is actually an RX-7 aluminum jack. It's the same jack that would have came in an FC RX-7 with a nice plate on it. Everything on this car is just as race as you could be. Look at that service light in the back too. So this car is literally the service lights, those little kick on lights are what inspired me on my Rad X7, the red car, to put those rock lights everywhere. And even on the Rod Millen Tribute Rally car that I built a few years ago, that's why it had all those service lights on it because seeing Patrick with this car, you know, the lights used to work and it was always handy to kick one of those lights on you could just move around and see. You didn't have to carry a pin light everywhere, which is, you know, what I did. So, with this car being the inspiration, and as you just heard, Rally George and Patrick's brother, they had found this one. This car was built in California, and it didn't see as much action as Penelope, the car behind me. So, it's in way better condition. It's way straighter. I believe George had it painted at some point. So maybe a 10 year old paint job, if not 15 year old paint job, but it's good enough for me. It looks really nice on camera, albeit it's a little bit rough in person, but it's a race car, so that's okay. So looking at the cage, y'all saw it at Broken Motorsports a little bit, but here is it in the light. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever been involved in having built, and especially for it to be mine in my own car. Um, this is a real roll cage. I mean, compared to what I've seen in drift cars and compared to what I've seen in drag cars and stuff, 
the form and fit and the tightness of the bars and where all the bars are at, the gussets, everything meeting all the regs, how nice everything fits, the the tilt back of the main hoop so that we can fit our seats because Calvin and I are tall guys. So, you know, I mocked up where my seat went and William built the cage around that. Putting two FIA full containment seats in a Dodge Colt is a mighty daunting task, but they are going to be not quite touching the edges, but almost touching in the middle. So it's going to be tight and just seeing, you know, I'm just, I'm just so stoked to finally, like I've always wanted to have an RX, like my first gen RX-7 over here. The goal for that car in my head has always been like this hill climb race car, right? Like aero, something I could take to Pikes Peak at some point. Like that's been my ultimate goal, like to be able to go race a hill climb, even if it's just an Appalachian trail, you know, local regional style hill climb, like I've wanted to do that. So this roll cage is what that car would have gotten. And I'm so happy to just see one of the cars that I have here, the rally car, has the roll cage that like when I was younger this was it was just so expensive to get one of these roll cages built you know like when you're broke and in college and and just starting working and trying to buy a house and, and do all that so I'm so stoked to to have been able to get a very safe roll cage you know your life is worth more than what the roll cage costs for sure so as far as this rally car suspension is basically stock Dodge Colt stuff so leaf springs in the back it's got a stock dodge colt axle i think it has a limited slip in it um these cars are 4x114 so these are real panasport wheels the nicest thing about getting that larry schmidt car over there and this one together is this car actually came on those turbo fan looking wheels over there from george and patrick had two sets of these 13 inch Panasports. So I was fortunate, William at Broken Motorsports was able to source me some 13 inch Hoosier rally tires. So I've got enough Hoosier rally tires coming to do the whole season and I can run the Panasports. So we've got two full sets of them and I am super stoked to just, on a light car like this, with not a lot of horsepower, putting a 15 inch wheel with a heavy rally tire on it is just gonna kill your power. So being able to have a white car, as it was intended in the 70s, you see the guys in Ireland and the UK racing their escorts with these small, light wheel and tire packages, and that really helps liven the car up because even that one over there with the 2.6 and the 14-inch wheels, those wheels and tires are heavy, and you can feel it. If you put the Panasports on that car, it's just it's snappy and it rips. So that's the... Uh, the new rally car in a nutshell. So over the course of the next month, basically Snowdrift is one month out. I'm pretty sure that I have nothing that's gonna be held up in the mail or, or whatever, but that would be the only thing that would basically keep me from getting this car done by the time we have to go to Snowdrift. So I've gotta drop the two liter engine back in, build the seat brackets, put the harness bar in. I have a fuel safe fuel cell coming. It's gonna look just like this one same size and everything to go in the back so it'll be all FIA legal and safe there and as well as well as a fire suppression system to go in this car some all new wiring stuff and a data logger dash display to go in this car as well so it is still going to be carbureted distributor just like the one over here the engine bay is going to look very much like this because you know the sweet oil cap hold down the little catch can right here like there's a lot of stuff we're going to learn from the schmidt car penelope and we're going to apply to what is going to be the rad lancer over here and make this car a successful limited two-wheel drive really fun rear wheel drive version of a ford escort because ultimately like i would love to have a ford escort and this is kind of the not a hundred thousand dollar version of that so I'm excited to get started on it. I'm excited that uh, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy all the videos. It's going to be pretty hectic. We're going to start cranking out a lot of videos. And uh, literally here after today, I got to do some service work on the dually. And I'm going to get started putting the livery on this thing because we just can't have a boring white Dodge Colt rally car as a thumbnail. We got to have all the stickers and everything on it. So, man, I just can't get away from RX-7 Door Creek. We got Mitsubishi Lancer Door Creek now. But 
I'm stoked, guys. It's getting cold up here in Indiana, so I'm going to put my big fluffy Eskimo hat on and get to work on this car. So with that, I want to thank you guys so much for the support. I really want to thank the patrons. You know, they've seen this car when it was all together ripping before I took it all apart. And, you know, none of this, not being able to make the jump into rad potential full time and pushing hard on this stuff wouldn't be possible without you guys watching the videos and the Patreon supporting rad potential. So if you've got questions about your build, rotary stuff, um, RX-8s, RX-7s, etc., you know, Patreon is the place where you can send me a message directly and I can respond to the messages more efficiently over there and make specific videos to answer their questions. So if you're interested in that, in addition to seeing the stuff behind the scenes and kind of one month or six week advantage to really the projects that start hitting on the YouTube channel, um, definitely would much appreciate your guys' support. And if you guys are interested in, you know, you've got cool Dodge Colt parts laying around, or if you know somebody that has Dodge Colts for sale, like more of them, I really could use some more windshields because I only have two of them and I only have two cars. Um, and in rally, you have to run a glass windshield. But uh, if you know somebody, drop it in the comments below. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's, uh, let's build a rally car. Keep it red. Letty, are you cold? Are you cold? Got you over here by the fire. Staying warm. Guys, it is literally four degrees outside in Indiana. In Tennessee, it's 25. That's very bearable. So, anyways, I'm going to be working on my car right by my wood stove so that I can stay warm. <laughs> Peace, guys.